All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahushai, Ba'ashim Harakakadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. Coming at you with another quick lesson to the spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahushai. I want to start with the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 15. It says, The simple believe of every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. And a lot of congregations got a lot of members who are simple. Okay, and they believe every word without doing the actual studying themselves. Okay, they believe what their leaders teach without actually going forward and uh, looking into it themselves. Like um, our apostles and elders has always said, even from the beginning, when I first learned this truth, which was about seven years ago, um, you know, one of the things that stood, stood out to me is they always said, don't believe me, do your own research, look it up. They have always said that, you know, and when the things that they have said, and I looked up myself, it was correct, you know. So I thought that was uh, dope through the spirit that they always said, look it up. Um, so we wouldn't just believe their word, but we would uh, look it up and see if it was true for ourselves. All right. Um, let's see the Lord. I think it's first Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 14. Verse 33 it says For the Most High is not the author of confusion But of peace As in all the churches of the saints And you got a lot of confusion going on right, Going on about right now um, Dealing with I'll just call the group out as you can see It's all happening um, As you see the, the, the body The churches of Great Millstone Of make Great Millstone defending the gospel Because you got these guys out here Who goes by the name of Wi-Fi Watchmen of it Jock Watchmen of Israel, you know, teaching, okay, contrary to what the MOTB actually is, you know, and um, as they were asked to address what is the MOTB, you know, or what is their stance on the MOTB, what is the beast, okay, and everything, they deflected and went into a slander campaign, which you can see, all right, they put up a, uh, I guess they did a sit down. And I know they have a preview of the sit down, uh, like a title of it, which says, uh, it said, uh, it said, uh, the great mess doctrine. And it, and it mentioned, uh, prostitution. Can we deal with white women, um, rape? And I forget the, uh, uh, and it's something about, I forget how they word it, but something about wearing, uh, fringes. Okay. And many brothers spoke with these topics. You can check on brothers' pages, you know, and, uh, see, how brothers went into these different uh, various things that they spoke about. Now, through the spirit, I'm gonna deal with uh, rape. Okay, concerning rape, right? Um, the the heavenly Father has a law in place. Okay, for everything, there's a law. There's a law in place, you know, for the things that need be. Just like how E has a law, you know. Now, concerning this 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 manner. Of rape and how to deal with it, we have broke this down numerous of times. But yet, you got Israelites, okay, still being on a, a emotional tip about it, okay, still using the the emotions of people of the world that doesn't uh, that doesn't understand the true ancient biblical view on how things were done in the ancient world. Now, let's get this real fast. The book of Job, chapter 8, verse 8, it says, For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers, right? And in the search of our fathers, you will understand the way of our fathers and how they did things. Okay? Now, we always mention, are these things we would do today? No. Let's get this precept. It says, uh, lawful... Unto. So, so Paul mentions it right here in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. It says, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Okay? Now, there's a lot of things in the scriptures that are lawful for us to do according to the law, right? But these things, 
we cannot do because these things are not expedient unto us. We're not in our own land. We're not sovereign. You know, we're in captivity. You know, and the law, our our law is not set up in this land to be ex to be uh, uh executed. You know, because a lot of things. Let's just say Levit Levit Leviticus twenty, verse thirteen. Was it would it be lawful? You know. According to the Bible, would these things be lawful? Would it be righteous judgment? Let us say, better, better yet, should I say? Yes, right? But these things you cannot do. You see? Yeah, these things are lawful unto you, but it's not expedient, you know? So we're not saying go out and do these things, but we will give you the history of these things, of these different various things that have took place. Right. And that if this was a righteous society would take place. This is what we're saying. We're not actually saying go out and do these things, but we are giving you the history on it and, and our ancient biblical customs. So when you talk about fringes, right, and a ribbon of borders of blue, isn't that one of our ancient customs? Yes. But is that something we can keep here in the society? Yes. So we do it. You know, you, they're not going to get in trouble wearing uh, your border blue and fringes. Now, can it can it uh, make you uh, make people uh, make you a target? Yeah, it can. OK, it can do that. But if you decide to do it, you're not wrong for doing that. If that's what you choose to do. I, me, myself, personally, I'm not wearing that outside everywhere I go. I'm not wearing that to work. You know, and all around the city and putting that target on my back. No. OK, I understand the spiritual spiritual warfare that we are in. OK. I'm being a sheep amongst wolves. Right. But a lot of you people want to be over righteous. OK, whatever. But then you, you, you harp on the law, law, law and this and that. Right. But there's other things you want to dismiss. Like this law that I'm about to bring out in Deuteronomy 20, the 22nd chapter and try to make it seem as if this was a bad thing that took place. This is how the Lord wanted things to be set up. Right? Are you ashamed? That's the question I gotta, I gotta ask to you Israelites out there. Are you ashamed of what's being spoken about in Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter? Huh? Because that's what it seems like. That you're ashamed of the, our ancient biblical customs concerning R-A-P-E. Because that's what y'all all try to bring out to try to slander us, you know, when y'all can't uh, uh, handle the questions that is that is uh, presented to you, you know? Or if y'all going off on doctrine and you don't like the way we getting on y'all, rebuking y'all, correcting y'all, this is what y'all go do. And honestly, concerning the leader of that group <laughs> I thought you had more honor than that but hey <laughs> whatever so let's get to the point so let's go to the book of Deuteronomy the 22nd chapter verse so let's start at verse 13 it says if any man take a wife and go into her and hate her and give occasions of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman when I came to her, but I found her not a maid. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city and the gate. Why was this so important? Because their daughter, basically he was saying his their, their daughter wasn't pure. Their daughter wasn't a virgin and that she basically played the harlot. So he didn't have a, a he didn't take her virginity. Right. Which. If the daughter was to play a, a be a whore, a hoe, a thought, what they would call in society, what would happen to her? She would be stoned. But guess what? They had the father and the mother had the tokens of her virginity. OK, to back it up. Right. For this various reason, if someone decided he didn't want to be with her daughter no more and just make up uh, an occasion like this. But that occasion that he was about to make up would have got her put to death. Even when you go back to the story with uh, Yahweh's father Joseph and Mary He didn't handle everything in a, in a due process as he was supposed to Right so when it was Becoming that time Right 
Mary would have looked like Mary wouldn't have looked like a virgin and Mary would have got stoned. OK, because that's a there's a law in Israel on adultery of what would take place if you commit commit adultery. You know. So verse 16, it says in the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife and he hated her. And lo, he had given occasion of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid. And yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. See, I got proof that my daughter was. Not that my daughter is a virgin and they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city and the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him and they shall immerse him in a hundred shekels of silver and give them unto the father of the damsel because he had brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel and she shall be his wife and he may not put her away all his days right so there wouldn't be a lot of hopscotching that you see going on now in the society with men just jumping from women to women if our law was intact or if this was a righteous society. You wouldn't see men, all this adultery being committed all, all around the world, especially within our nation, right? If what? Our righteous law was intact. If we was in a righteous society. Huh? This wouldn't take place. This is what the earth needs. Okay. Righteous order established back on a planet Earth. Okay. Verse 20. But if this thing be true and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, then shall they what? Bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house and the men of her city shall what? Look at the judgment she's about to get. Stone her with stones that she die because she have wrought folly. This is folly in Israel. To play what? To play the whore in her father's house. So, so shall thou put evil away from among you. This is evil. The Lord considers adultery an evil work. That's why it was punishable by death. Verse 22. If a man be found lying with a woman married to a husband, then they shall, then they both of both of them die. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman, so shall thou put away evil from Israel. Sounds great to me. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto a husband, right? Basically engaged. That's what they would call it in a society. And a man find her in a city and lie with her. Then you shall bring them both out into the gate of that city and you shall stone them with stones that they die. Why? The damsel because she cried not being in the city and the man because he have humbled his neighbor's wife so thou shalt put away evil from among Israel means she was with it she didn't cry out she didn't mind that it took place verse 25 but if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field and the man force her and lie with her then the man only that lay with her shall die why wouldn't she get judged mm -hmm. why wouldn't she get judged let's continue to read but unto the damsel thou shalt not do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. Go ahead. It's locked here. We have invitations vanilla and gallon. One second. I'm going to read that again. Salakia says, but in verse 26, but unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For as when a man rises up against his neighbor and slave him, even so is this matter. For he found her in the field and the betrothed damsel cried and there was not to save her. Meaning she didn't want it to happen. Okay. But it took place anyway because the man overpowered her. But she did not want it to take place. So she wasn't worthy to be put. She, she wouldn't be worthy to be put to death. <clears throat> Verse 28. And if a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed and lay hold on her. Here I go to key. Key one. Verse 28. And if a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed and lay hold on her and lie with her and they be found. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver and she shall be his wife because he have humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. Mm. You know, why and why would he be paying the father 50 shekels? Because the Lord was taking up. I mean, uh, the man was uh, taking property of the father, you know, which which is his daughter. 
Okay, but this man, right? He wasn't put to death if he found a virgin and he laid hold on her. Was he? No, he was not. No, he was not. Matter of fact, let's go to that. What's that? Deuteronomy 22. And that's it. It was just a quick hit through the spirit. You know? You guys have to try to run to this and bring this out. Okay? As it's supposed to back up your BS. No, y'all ashamed of the law of the Lord. Be honest. Verse 28 in the NLT. Suppose a man has intercourse with a young woman who is a virgin, but not but is not engaged to be married if they are discovered he must pay her father 50 pieces of silver then he must marry the young woman because he violated her and he may never divorce her as long as, as he lives there is no punishment for that there is no punishment now when you go into this word because in this society what would they consider that as if you just found a virgin in the city and you lay hold on her, you grab her up and you deal with her. What are they going to say? They're going to say it's R-A-P-E. That's what they're going to say. Hey, I apologize. I have two calls back to back. Do you think we do have it in the gallon or we don't? Uh, let's go into that word. Look at that. Strong's H, 8610. Ty fast. Ty fast. To catch, handle, lay hold, take hold of, seize, arrest, seize, uh, to be to be captured, to be taken, to catch, grasp with hands. There you go. Okay. So, at the end of the day, y'all ashamed of the gospel, right? And you're trying to play games, and you're trying to use uh, these different words uh, that's associated with the world, how the way the world put it puts it, you know, but. There's an ancient way of how we've done things in Israel, our custom, customs and manners. Don't pick and choose which one you want to apply and which ones you want to dismiss. Okay, and I'm saying that as far as bringing up historical facts and biblical ways. Now, when you're dealing with as far as um, doing things in the society, uh, you must understand, like I said again, uh, what Paul was saying. Everything is lawful unto me, but everything is not expedient. So there's certain things you can, you can do. You know, and there's and other things that you just cannot do. Okay, use some damn common sense. Shalom.